Welcome to the blessings of Jesus. In today's message, Power Under Control, Pastor Peter teaches how the word meek was originally used. There's something thrilling about watching powerful wild horses run free. The one thing I really do miss about South Africa is that in my early teen years, I used to ride horses a lot. There was a time when I rode at least two or three times a week. I miss that so much. But several years ago, we were at the Outer Banks and visited a riding stable. The owner selected horses for Pastor Margaret and I. She came along with us and the three of us walked our horses down to the beach. It was slow and arduous. You can't gallop a horse on a, on a road in America. The horse will slip and slide. But once we got to the beach, everything changed. Now, Pastor Margaret wasn't up for the gallop, but the owner and I let our horses go. We urged them on, and we galloped as hard as we could down the beach towards Nag's Head. Uh, the owner of the stable kept up with me. We spoke to each other one as we were going along. And when the run was over, the horses had spent their full strength. And then we were safely in the saddles at all times under control and feeling completely safe. What a run that was. I hope that as you hear me tell that story, you can feel the excitement that is in that experience on the beach on the Outer Banks. I, I hope as you hear that story that you begin to understand the word meek in a whole new life. In the early days when horses were broken, they were meeked. The full strength of the horse remained. The brute power of the animal was contained, but the wildness was gone. The horse could be directed and used for work purposes and for the sheer pleasure of running and galloping on a beach. Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 5. Now you may think of meekness and humility as being interchangeable words. They are not. A humble man may say, I'm not able to pick up this big box. But a meek man knows he can pick it up. But to keep from embarrassing the humble man, he says, can I help you with that box? Meekness is power under control. Meekness is the art of living in submission to a master. It is the respect that a fighter has for his or her trainer or an athlete has for his or her trainer. Meekness is the ability to manifest the character of Christ no matter what circumstances we are facing. Meekness is demonstrated when we don't force people to do something that we really want them to do, even if they really do need to do it. A meek person waits for the teachable moment. Meekness is patiently waiting for people to ask for help. Meekness is demonstrated by parents who wait for that teachable moment to help take their child to the next level. When God opened my eyes to how this word meekness was originally used, my heart leapt within me. I said yes to Jesus. I said yes to the blessings of meekness. I said, Lord, I want more of the wildness in me broken and brought under your control and your presence in my life. Meek people have learned to release the reins of their life into the hands of Jesus. This week, I listened to the testimony of an Indian man who is living out these first three blessings of Jesus that we have been studying together. Mustafa was born to a Muslim family in India, and when he was just two or three months old, a terrible tragedy occurred, cooking over a, a raised hearth, uh, boiling hot tea was spilt on this child. Mother rushed him to the hospital, and hospital after hospital said the same thing. 
this boy cannot be saved. Half of his skin was burned, and the mother was in deep grief. The family was in shock. But against all odds, this little boy survived. Family had left and said, if he passes, we'll come back. He didn't pass. He grew up in the faith of his parents. In 1993, when he turned 16, he had a spiritual encounter that changed the destiny of his life. On the way home from school, he heard a voice calling to him. The voice said, Mustafa, Mustafa. And he looked around to see who was calling him, but no one was there. This happened three times. And then the voice said, I am the Lord. There is no one else besides me. Look to me and be saved. Again, he looked around. He looked up, expecting to maybe see God, maybe see Allah. He had no idea what the voice was. And all of a sudden, he felt a power coming upon him. He felt like there was an electrical current flowing through his body, and he began to shake. Now, he had assumed that he'd heard the voice of Allah, so he thought, I should go to the mosque and say some prayers. But the power that was within him would not allow him to go to the mosque. He said, well, I should go home. And as soon as he came to his home and opened the gate to enter the family compound, his foot would not get past the gate. He couldn't move it. He pulled it back. And he said to himself, I need to go wherever this power wants to take me. And so the power took him down the road. There was a church. He stood before the church, and he stood at the gate of the church, and he heard a man preaching. And as he stood there and listened, the voice spoke to him again. Do you understand what the man is talking about? Well, the man was preaching in Telugu. That was not Mustafa's mother tongue. He knew some Telugu. He said, no, I don't understand. But somehow he knew that the man was preaching about Jesus. And so when the voice spoke to him again, he said, I think he's talking about Jesus. And the voice said to him, it was Jesus who spoke to you when you left your high school today. And Mustafa felt a peace come upon him that he'd not ever known before. He went home, he got down on his knees And he said, there must be some kind of way you're supposed to pray. Obviously, he wasn't going to pray the way he used to in a language he didn't know. So he said to Jesus, how do I pray to you? What do I say? And as soon as he said that, a reel began to play. And he saw his whole life passing before him. He saw all the sins that he had committed. He began to feel remorseful and And he began to repent, and he began to mourn for the things that he had done. Yes, that is me. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. As soon as he stopped confessing, the reel of his life stopped. Mustafa looked up. And there standing in front of him was Jesus himself. Immediately he fell down in the spirit and laid there for several hours. And from then on, Jesus began to speak to him regularly. He heard the voice of Jesus. Now one day he saw Jesus as he went down the street. He looked and he saw Jesus right in front of him. Remember, he has no knowledge of the life of Jesus. And he saw Jesus with blood coming down his face and blood coming off of his hands and blood around his feet. And he said, Jesus, what happened to you? And Jesus pointed him to a very large lake of fire on the other side. People were falling in there. He said to Jesus, why are all those people going into this lake of fire? And Jesus said, if they will confess their sin and ask me to forgive them, they can be saved. 
And then Jesus said to Mustafa, who will go and tell them about me? And Mustafa raised his hand. I will tell them. But he added, I have a problem. I stutter and I can't speak clearly. And Jesus touched him and helped him. And from 16 years on, he began to preach. Well, it didn't take long for there to be tremendous repercussions in his own family. He began to shun him. One day his father said, you're no longer welcome, gave him a small amount of money, threw him out. They wouldn't touch his clothes. They took it with a stick and threw it out the house. He was beaten. He suffered many, many things. He faced death threats, moved from one place to another. Mustafa used to fast and pray quite a bit, and so he went out with, a, with some water to spend 40 days in praying and fasting. He broke his heart before Jesus, opened his heart and said, Jesus, this is the last time I'm going to talk to you. Once again, the voice spoke. Will you leave me too? Mustafa said, Lord, what do you want? Why do you want me? Jesus said, before you were born, before you were in your mother's womb, I chose you, and you are a servant of mine. And Mustafa said, if you've chosen me, then my whole family must follow you. And Jesus said to him, go home, and I will begin to release miracles through your life. And so he walks home, and as he comes to the gate, his father is standing there. His father lets him in invites his mother to give him food. And one by one, his family came to know Jesus. It all started with his sister. She had been married for six years and was unable to have children. His mother said to him, what can you do for her? And the Lord showed him that she had had a demonic influence in her life. He cast the demon out of her and shortly after that, she conceived and a year later was holding a child in her arms. The mother began bringing sick people to him and more and more were healed. The mother was so curious about what was happening in her home, she, she said to Mustafa, can I heal people? And Mustafa said, if you'll confess your sins and ask Jesus to save you, you'll be able to heal people. And so his mother received Jesus as his family, as, his, as her savior, and now his whole family, his brothers, his sisters, have all come to Jesus except his father. His father continued to resist the message. But one day his father contracted edema, his legs began to swell, swelled excessively. And his wife said, if you'll ask your son to pray, you'll be healed. He was reluctant. And what I've not yet shared with you, that his father was the president of the mosque. He said, I, I'm hesitant to ask for prayers. There are already rumors that are flying around about the family. And so he went from doctor to doctor trying to find healing for his medical condition. No one could help him. In desperation, he came to his son. His son gave him some oil and said, rub this on your legs and say, the blood of Jesus heals me. Amen. The dad was a train driver for the South India Railroad. He took the oil with him as he took the next overnight journey to a town down the road. And the co-engineer with him said, uh, what are you doing? He said, I'm putting this oil, the blood of Jesus will heal me. And, and the man said, that's not blood, that's oil. He said, but it's the blood of Jesus that heals. They went, delivered the train, got the tra caught the next train or 
engineered the next train ride home. And on the way home, both of his legs, the edema went completely, restored completely to normal. <laughs> and so the man was healed by the blood of Jesus. And he returns home, speaks to his son, and gives his heart to Jesus. What a powerful story. Yeah. Mustafa's entire family is still spreading the message of Jesus in India. Now, if you're ready to be a follower of Jesus, most likely you may have heard some words in your ears that were not my voice. You're listening to this message, and you heard a message, you heard someone speaking to you. It was Jesus. Now, what Mustafa didn't know, and if you are in this room and have been following Jesus, you already do know that all the words that Jesus heard or said are already in the Bible. Mustafa didn't know that. And if you're watching this, you may not know that. But everything that Jesus said can be found in the Bible. In fact, Jesus quoted from the before books, that is the Old Testament, and he quoted from the Injil, that is the New Testament. Here is an example. When Jesus said to Mustafa, I am the Lord and there's no one else besides me, look to me and be saved, Jesus was actually quoting from prophet Isaiah who wrote these words about the Lord. I am the Lord. There is no other besides me. There is no God. I equip you, and I brought you to know me. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 5. And here we discover that Jesus identified himself as the God of the Old Testament. Mustafa discovered himself in his story, found himself in the great stories of the men the Old Testament. He found himself in Jeremiah, whom God saw before he was born. He found himself in Moses. In the Bible, we read this about Moses. Now the man, Moses, was very meek. More than all the people who are on the face of the earth. Numbers chapter 12 and verse 3. Moses was a man's man. He had power like no other man. It was out of control until the Lord meeked him. And after the Lord spoke to him in the desert, he meeked him and touched his tongue. And the Lord used him in the course of history. He used Moses in the course of history to change the history of the Middle East and indeed the history of the world. Now, are you ready to receive the blessing of having more meekness in your life? What did Jesus mean when he said the meek will inherit the earth? It means that people who learn to walk in the power of God under the control of the Holy Spirit will be established in the earth. They will inherit physical blessings. An inheritance is not earned. It's something that's given. It's passed on as a gift. And those who live under the control of the Holy Spirit will inherit a place to stand. Jesus is not just interested in the blessing us with eternal life. He wants to bless us in our present life. And today an invitation is being extended to you to recognize your spiritual poverty, to mourn the problems that your sin has brought into your own life and to the lives of others whom you have hurt. If you will give your pride and your stubbornness to Jesus, he will bless you with eternity in heaven and meekness on this earth. He will give you a place to stand, a powerful place to stand and to tell your story. 
God gave Mustafa a powerful place to stand. People passing by the gate to the house often fell down in the spirit. Strangers walking past the house where he lived with his family now became a place where people were powerfully encountered. And when somebody fell down, they would walk out and talk to them about Jesus. God used Mustafa to heal people every day. Yesterday, I prayed for a man in Juba, Sudan. He was in the hospital. He listened to one of my messages. He said, my legs are in terrible pain. I prayed for him. I said, pain, leg pain, go now in the name of Jesus. Amen. I left the computer, and when I came back, there was a message from him. My pain's gone completely. Pray for my other leg. Amen. I wrote a message, a very simple, meek, humble message. Leg pain, go in Jesus' name. When I came back to my computer, the other leg is healed. He felt the power of God come upon him. One of our network partners this week prayed for a lady who was having trouble conceiving. She got word back that she had conceived and a child will be born. It's the power of God. Perhaps as I've been speaking to you, that voice is continuing to speak to you, not mine, but it's the voice of Jesus. His voice is louder than my voice. You're hearing my words, but you're hearing him talk to you, calling you into this meek relationship, which brings blessing into your life. Jesus is calling you to follow him. Repent of your sins and ask Jesus to save you. <clears throat> Say, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and my place on the cross. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of all the sins I've committed. I yield the control of my life to you. Come, Holy Spirit, fill each one who's praying with me right now. If you just received Jesus as your Savior, or you were healed during this message, write to me and tell me what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue learning about the blessings of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.